cord. <clears throat> and then I'm going to do this. Good evening and welcome to tonight's program, an update on the Penobscot River Paddling Trail with Chloe Chun. I'm Brenda Harrington, Program Librarian at the Belfast Free Library, and I want to thank you all for joining us. The Belfast Free Library is pleased to once again co-sponsor the fall and winter series of evening programs with the Belfast Bay Watershed Coalition. In her talk tonight, Chloe Chun will brief us all about recent developments on the Penobscot River Paddling Trail. To introduce Chloe briefly, Chloe is a former high school and college teacher. She is a naturalist, a registered Maine guide, a co-founder of the Maine Master Naturalist Program, and a longtime board member of the Belfast Bay Watershed Coalition. Before I turn the mic over to Chloe, I want to remind you all to please keep your mics muted. And if you have any questions during the talk, please enter them in the chat and we will answer them at the end. All right, with all that, I will turn the mic over to Chloe. Take it away, Chloe. Hi, everyone. Thanks for being with me. Uh, I have a few announcements before I start the program. One is there's an eclipse of the moon tonight in the... Um, wee hours of the morning, tomorrow morning. And uh, it's gonna be a long one from like 1 a.m. to 6 a.m. culminating around 4 a.m. if you're up and looking out the window and it's clear enough. And then on Saturday, I'm leading a sunset walk on Sears Island from three to five. And if you would like to join us, I'd like to know it ahead of time because I have a set number of people allowed due to COVID restrictions. So call me, here's my number, 338-1147 and make a reservation. Uh, also, we have no evening program for December, and but you can watch for the next newsletter on December 1st. And then on December 11th, we have the Harbor Bird Walk, Bird Watch from the footbridge at 8.30, 8.30 to 10.30. So those are all on our website um, if you need to take a look. So <clears throat> I would like first, not only to acknowledge that the Wabanaki peoples of Maine are the original people of our entire state of Maine, but they are still the people living in and on the river, the Penobscot River that I'm going to talk to you tonight. The Penobscot Nation is one of the tribes of the Wabanaki Confederacy, and we recognize their continuing connection to these lands, waters, and culture. We pay respect to the indigenous people from whom we can learn how to restore our broken relationships with each other and with the earth. And you can see the territory goes from Nova Scotia all the way around down into the mid-Atlantic states or the New England states, I guess I should say. So a big thank you to the Belfast Library as always, thank you for being the glue of our greater community in good times and in hard times. And thank you for providing learning in traditional ways and in the latest forms of communication, for providing technical services and personal help to patrons, and for helping other organizations and communities in the, and other organizations <laughs> communicate in this time of social isolation and for being a shining light for all of us. Thank you. And I wanna thank the Belfast Bay Watershed Coalition for all the work we do, weekly monitoring of the water quality in the Bay, collecting cigarette filters and recycling them and being on the Belfast Keep, Keep Belfast Beautiful team for our monthly educational programs like this one tonight, our monthly nature explorations and bird week, natural literacy program we give to the schools and the fish friends program also in the schools and the little river community trail and its maintenance 
the Penobscot Bay Stewards Program, which we will be offering this spring, and for organizing the Penobscot Watershed Conference that has been postponed until next fall. So I'm going to start, we're going to go, well, this is uh, Bucksport, the Penobscot Narrows Bridge, the place where one crosses. But um, basically, I'm going to start at the top of the river in Medway, where um, we start our paddling trail. Um, my sources for the Wabanaki names and some of the history are here. Um, there, I owe a huge debt to James E. Francis Sr., the Penobscot Nations historian, and his maps that have language on them, uh, language uh, in, Waban in Wabanaki languages, mostly Penobscot language, and English. And um, David S. Cook, whose book Above the Gravel Bar taught me all about native canoe routes in Maine. Fanny Hardy X Storm, Indian place names, and William Haviland, a place at the place of lobsters and cra crabs, and then the his historian at University of Maine, Paula Mac Paulina McDougall. So our mission is at the top. The Penobscot River Paddling Trail seeks to establish and maintain a paddling, camping, and educational trail down the main stem of the Penobscot River. And this includes good camping, education about the colonial current, uh, Wabanaki, natural history, ecology, industrial history, everything we can find about the Penobscot River. And to promote and demonstrate an ethic of watershed conservation, connect paddlers to upstream campsites, which we don't operate like the East Branch and the West Branch and to downstream campsites like the Maine Island Trail Association and to maybe help the area grow economically by offering guides, lodgings, outfitters, campsites and so forth. So it all started when my husband David and I volunteered to help a University of Maine researcher in the Penobscot River when he was tagging sturgeon for research. And that is an Atlantic sturgeon. It weighed 55 pounds. And um, we, we were amazed at the beauty of the Penobscot River. We've both lived in Maine most of our lives and just we didn't realize how wild and how beautiful the Penobscot River is. And that's what started us on this whole love of the Penobscot River. So um, after a couple of trips down it ourselves, we decided there should really be a paddling trail with real um, legal campsites for people to stay in all the way down, a series of rustic campsites. And so, so far they're provided by five individual landowners and some bigger organizations like Towns, the Country Club in Orono, Penobscot Salmon Club, Katahdin Forest Management, and we do make use of a couple of commercial campgrounds along the way too. We still need more, we're still working, and we want you to help us. So, and we also have in our, as our next phase, educational materials and help is definitely wanted on that. So we invite your participation. There's our website at the bottom. Something to know that we don't have, the trail is not, um, we don't use the islands in the Penobscot River to camp on because the Penobscot Indian Nation owns all the islands between Medway and Indian Island in Old Town. Most of the, these islands are owned by individual tribal members. They're for things like burial grounds and fiddlehead gathering and, and personal use. Uh, the tribally owned islands are reserved for cultural experiences. So we can't just be showing up <laughs> at any old time. So the, the uh, thing to remember is don't go on to any of the islands unless you have prior permission from Penobscot Nation. So 
Paddling is a long time tradition. And I'll throw in a few old photos now and then. This is a birch bark canoe made by Steve Kayard. This one's a very artistically decorated <laughs> one. Um, the, this is Maine and it's the, the main watersheds in the state. Um, here's the Penobscot watershed. The brown is the outlines of the watershed. It takes up one third of the state and it's the biggest watershed within the state. The St. John has a bigger watershed, but it goes all into New Brunswick too. So, um, whoops, there's my next slide. <laughs> uh, this is the Penobscot watershed. And you can see how much water is in it. Um, and it's huge, eight th over 8,000 square miles and a lot of lakes and rivers and streams contributing to it. This is a schematic I like because you can really kind of see how many tributary, and these are just the major trib tributaries. So our trail starts here where the East Branch and the West Branch come together. That's the confluence in Medway. And it goes 100 miles down this way to Bucksport. Contributing to it are, this is the North Branch of the Penobscot, this is the South Branch. They both start very near Canada and come together at Pittston Farm and Canada Falls, and that's Sabumac. And then this is the West Branch of the Penobscot coming down, and it's got a lot of dams on it here. That's why there's so many big, and up here too, that's why there's so many big lakes. And then um, to Medway. The East Branch is less damp, not damped, well, less damped. And so that's, and, and its name is um, Dawn Light. Uh, my uh, titles are all covered up up here. I can't see the names of things, but um, the East Branch is um, Stream of Light, Wasatek, because um, it's the stream that gets the first light in the morning. So that's the confluence. Then you start on our part of the trail that we have been working on and you come down. This is the Mattawamkeg River watershed. It's huge and it's the way to travel east all the way to the ocean. Um, and, and it also contributes a huge amount of water to the river, to the main stem. On down, the next huge watershed is the Piscataquis River watershed with all of of its tributaries. And that is actually one third of salmon spawning area of the Penobscot watershed. Then further down the Pasadumkeg watershed and a couple of smaller ones, Kunduskeg and Saudapskog. So just wanted you to kind of get oriented there. Alice Kelly, who did her PhD on the geology of the Penobscot River, classifies it into four divisions, the headwaters and the where ours starts with the other three divisions, the island division where islands are long and streamlined by the river and the riverbanks on both sides are mostly floodplains of silver maple trees and they are so beautiful. Then the next section is the rapids division where the exposed bedrock uh, has a steep gradient. It goes downhill much steeper and that creates all the waterfall like white water rushing down that section. And then uh, the last section is the tidal section where it's different at all times of day with either the tide rising or the tide falling. This is our logo. And this is what you'll see from the river when you're paddling. This shows you where the campsites are. This is a um, typical uh, um, map on our website. We have, our website has a series of 11 downloadable maps that you can print or just access with your phone while you're traveling. And um, with you know designations, it'll tell you campsites. This will appear, these explain what every little um, numbered dot means. 
and um, with symbols. So this is uh, the beginning right here, the Medway boat launch. Here's the confluence. And then you start down. The first dam is eight miles later, the Mattisiunk Dam. So here's the put in at Medway at the boat launch. And then you paddle flat water for the next eight miles because it is ponded by the dam. Uh, sorry, it's ponded by the dam. And um, the dam is Mattisiunk Dam and it's named after a stream that comes in about two miles below it. Mattisiunk Stream, which translates as Rapids at the Mouth Stream. And these names, the, uh, the names in, in uh, Penobscot language are, they either describe the formation like a mountain or a hill or something, or they describe what it looks like coming into the river because it's like a road sign, it's, it's a marker so that the person pulling up the river or paddling down the river can find a place, you know, they know where they are. These are for, they're just like street signs to let you know where you are on the river. Patagumpa stream comes in above the Mattisiunk Dam and its name means gravelly bend in the river, but you can't see any gravel because the dam was built and that area was flooded. It's much deeper now. And so the gravelly bend has disappeared. So this is part of the process. We're still up above that dam, um, trying to find a campsite. <laughs> and that's David. Um, we've done a lot of just canoeing and looking and canoeing and looking and knocking on doors. And it's been a process. So this is one of the possible campsites up in that ponded part above Mattisiunk Dam, where if you just paddle out a few feet into the river, you see Mount Katahdin. Mm. This, is, this is the Mattisiunk Dam, which is the first one you encounter and we're below it now. It's also a good place to put in if you want to avoid that first dam. Sorry, I'm out of control here. That was our 2013 trip. Um, and you just see such beautiful things along the river, no matter what time of summer you go. Um, those are damselflies on the water. And uh, in August, you see cardinal flower growing, the beautiful red flowers all along the river. These are Dobson fly egg cases, and they look so much like barnacles. <laughs> That's what they look like up close. So now we're where the Mattawamkeag River comes in. And Mattawamkeag means at the place of the ele elevated gravel bar. Matta means end of something, like the end of a river coming into the big river. And Keck, Keg, and Cook all refer to water. Another great thing that happens is fishing and catching, catching your dinner. This is a nice big bass we had for dinner. More damselflies and blue vervain blooming in August. This is a campsite across the river from Lincoln in the town of Chester. And it's just a little way, just, you know, 10th of a mile maybe up a stream called Madunkiunk Stream. Uh, Madunkiunk means quick drop. And uh, it doesn't look like it here. I can show you the quick drop um, in a minute, but um, unk denotes difficulty in canoeing or poling. So if, you're, if it's a river that has a big drop that you have to get up or get down, successfully and you put on a lot of muscle power and you unk like that, unk or hunk, either one like Nassau to hunk river, they, they mean you gotta work hard at times to, to live through that one. And this is the campsite. Uh, the owner who is, who is right there went to great, 
great trouble to make a beautiful campsite. And on that particular rainy trip, he even had a nice big campfire to dry us out when we got there. That's the quick drop, the first quick drop. There, there, there's more on that stream. But that would be hard to get up. Don't you think you'd have to oog to get up that? And this is at the same campsite, a very luxurious outhouse. So moving on, um, whoops, how did I do that? Moving on uh, to another one of our downloadable maps. So that campsite that we were just at, Madunkiunk, is up this little stream here. So there's a big island here in the river called Matanawcook. And there's another island here, Mahakanak, and another island here, Mohawk. Okay, I'm going to talk about those three, all M's. Matanawcook was one of three early permanent villages during the 19th century. There were homes, industries, school, a school for the children until the 1890s when children went across the river to Lincoln to go to school. Matanawcook comes from the word where, it, where there is an island of hilly terrain. And it's also in, indicated to be the end of something in water. So, and there are many features that are Matanawcook. There's a stream, a lake, a pond, an island. So something in that general area is what all these are kind of hearkening to. Then the next M is Mahakanak Island. This is one of the tribally owned islands and um, it means island of elevated land or turtle island. And it was one of the islands um, on our very first trip in 2013, David and I went up before the trip, we went up to Indian Island and asked in person if we could camp on any of their islands. And they said yes to this one and one other. So Mahakanak was our first time camping on one of their islands and they had some cabins on it and that they had, they were old, they hadn't been used in a while and now they've been all spiffed up because now Mahakanak is used for ceremony and for summer camp for children. And, but it was, we were all by ourselves then. And just a little bit below, Mahakanak is roughly equivalent to South Lincoln in, latitude. And then just a little bit below that, still in South Lincoln, David looked over to the eastern shore and said, what's in the roots of that big maple tree? It was right on the bank. And that big maple tree had grown up around an old car on the riverbank. <laughs> see the door handle there. You can see the, <laughs> I don't know how he spotted it really. <laughs> And then that was right at the beginning of Mohawk Rapids and uh, then Mohawk Island. So um, Mohawk Rips is that word. And um, our, we have a campsite just below that. So we've, we've named it after Mohawk Rips and Mohawk Island, but it's not on the island. The Mohawks came to Maine. They were a tribe of the Iroquois Confederation and they were known to be fierce and brutal, and, and they were much feared by Wabanaki tribes as evidenced in oral accounts. So here's Mohawk campsite, just a little bit below Mohawk Island, and a 12 foot picnic table that we had just, this was a work crew making the campsite and getting the table up there. And that's, we had a lot of help with a speedboat, a motorboat getting the boat to the river, to the campsite on the riverbank. Um, this is just a scene going along. Um, there are this is in the many islands flat water section for eight miles between Lincoln and the West Enfield Dam, which spans from West Enfield to Howland. So here's another one of our maps. Um, Mohawk campsite is right up there at the top. And then here we come down to, this is the West Enfield Dam and Howland. This is the Piscataquis River coming in, the one with the huge watershed with spawning for 
salmon and other fish. And you see there's a dam across that too. Okay, so, and then it goes on down. But, um, so that's the West Enfield Dam in the background. And that was a very hot, hot day and a tough portage. And as soon as we got the canoes back down around the portage and back to the river, Jane and I just jumped in to cool off and it felt so good. And the water is so clean and clear. The West Enfield Dam has a fish passageway that may or may not be very effective. So as soon as we know fish are making it up that far north, um, there's supposed to be some better fish, fish passage made there. This is an air photo of the West Enfield, uh, sorry, below the West Enfield Dam. It's up here somewhere. It's no, it's way up that river somewhere. This is the Penobscot River. It's really off the picture here. This is the Piscataquis River. Now I'm straight coming down. And that's a bridge in, in Howland. This is the Pis Piscataquis River Dam, which used to completely block the entire Piscataquis. But now the Penobscot River Restoration Project in 2016 finished this beautiful little white water passageway so that migrating fish can go up it into the Piscataquis and come back down it. And it's a, an engineered fish passage instead of removing the dam completely. And that's what it looks like when you're down there beside it, when the water's low. When the water's high, it's huge waves. So just another, just a reminder, that, that opened up this entire watershed of the Piscataquis that had been totally blocked off. So that was a huge help in fish restoration. Okay, now we go on down the river. Uh, the next play, the next thing is where the Pasadumkeg River comes in. And this is where the commercial campground is, Point Pasadumkeg Cabins and Campground. Then there's some little rips here, and then you come down um, to the next interesting landmark is Olemon Stream, which comes in here. This is Olemon Island because another stream branches off, and so it's really sealed off by water. So that's an island, and this is Sugar Island. So I'm going to talk about those. Um, that's the Pasadumkeg River mouth where it comes into the Penobscot. And it and that means Pasadumkeg is stream at the place above the gravel bar. And that is the stream above the gravel bar. Another good fish dinner that night. Um, this was our campsite at Point Pasadumkeg Campground, which is a commercial campground. Then uh, this, I showed you Olemon Island and Stream. Well, that name in Wabanaki means Red Clay Island. And Olemon Stream is Stream of the Red Clay Quarry, which is a quarry of hematite rock, which is, this, is what uh, the red paint people made their red ochre from. This too, this was one of the three permanent villages on the, in, in the 19th century with homes and school and some industry. And right now, just above it, just above the, um, let's see, right, uh, right here, just before you get down as far as Olemon stream, right there is the place now of Nabizan, which some people I believe have visited it's a place of learning and healing for Wabanaki tribes and guests. And it's just above Olemon stream. Nibizan means medicine. And Nibi means water, their first medicine. The next island I showed you on that map, Sugar Island, translates as Island of Sugar Plums. And that was the other island that the tribe gave us permission to camp on when we first made our first trip down the river. 
It's a big island. It's now used for ceremony, but it was deserted. Then. Well, there were some old cabins on it then too. Um, and when David and I found out it was called the Island of the Sugar Plums, we kept saying, well, we walked all over that island and we didn't see any plum trees. Well, it turns out sugar plums are service berry or shadbush berries. And they ripen in late July and or Ju late June and July and August. And they're delicious. If you've ever had them, they're better than blueberries. I think they're on, you know, shrub like trees, small trees or shrubs. And uh, the significance of shad bush really the reason it's named shad bush is it blue it blossoms it's one of the very first things to flower in the spring and you know that when that bursts into bloom the shad are coming up the river and it helped the tribal people know that we will not starve we will make it the shad are on the way and also on that island a spring peeper just climbed right onto David, <laughs> checked him out. <laughs> so the next campsite down the river is in Argyle, which is several miles above Old Town. And uh, private owner, Peter Crockett, and he, he named it River Billy's Retreat because it was the center of logging operations when the River Billies were active. And he's worked very hard making a very nice campsite with a lot of, you know, a covered picnic table and a wooden tent platform that you can't see in the picture and um, a beautiful outhouse. So we've enjoyed staying there. And then uh, in that same general vicinity in Greenbush, um, there are all these little boom islands that were created. They were made during the logging days to attach booms to that so they could open and close the river, the lines of logs for either just traveling them down the river or for sorting them. Every log was marked with its owners, uh, it's the company's symbol. And so, and they all jumbled together going down the river. So there were places where they had to cordon them off in, with booms and sort them according to company. And the booms were anchored to things like this that were drilled into the rocks. This is an old picture of what it did look like in Greenbush back when logging was in its heyday. And then um, just below Greenbush near, just as you're getting into Milford, which is across the river from Old Town, the Sunkays stream comes in from the east and Sunkays is from Sakeas, which means outlet that comes into view from concealment. And it is a well-concealed outlet. Sometimes we, we pass by it and I'm looking for it and I don't even see it. <laughs> it's all shaded and with overhanging silver maples. And, but it's a beautiful river to, to um, if you ever want to just a nice flat water canoe paddle through a swampy river, that's a beautiful river to do. And we saw this otter right at the outlet. So now we're below that a little bit, coming into Milford over here, Old Town over here. Here's the Milford Dam down here. So, whoops, sorry. Um, but I just wanna show you first, as you're coming into Old Town, stop it. As you're coming into Old Town, the river splits and one branch of it, where's my cursor? One branch goes west, loops around here. And when it gets behind the writing here, uh, where, where uh, Pasadumkeg stream, come on, where Pasadumkeg stream comes in, that's where it begins to be called the Stillwater River. And then it goes on down and comes out back into the Penobscot. But until the, pass, the um, Pushaw stream joins it, it's not the Stillwater River. So many people refer to this part up here as the Stillwater Branch. 
the, Wab the uh, Penobscot name for it is Ketawamkatek, and it means long sandy river. So we've named the campsite there um, Ketawamkatek campsite. And then right after that, this is Orson Island. This is Indian Island, which is all residential. Uh, there's a bridge over to the mainland of Old Town right there. Then we have Old Town, and that is French Island. Our next campsite is on French Island. And then you go on down th through Orono. So we'll get to that in a minute. Now we can move on. So this is Ketawamkatek campsite at the beginning of North Old Town before on, the, on that westerly branch of the Penobscot. And there's David nailing up the sign there so you can see where the campsite is. This is what a lot of our privies are. If the landowner or someone else didn't get fancy and make a fancy one, we have these rustic outdoor ones that are behind a screen or some sort of hidden in the trees. And they're just made, David makes them out of a hospital commode or a bedside commode rather, uh, and fortifies them. And, you know, we get a professional soil scientist to test the soil for it and put it in at the campsite. And that one we carried in by canoe. We were going to carry the picnic table in over two canoes, but Jim Fahey, the game warden showed up and said, let's take it on my motorboat. And that was wonderful. We loved it. And then there was a camp that was due to arrive and the campers carried the 12 foot table up to the campsite. This was also right there at Ketawamkatek campsite, a parent and a baby eagle. And the baby was really demanding. And this is at the same place. And then as you get to Old Town, there's the boat launch and that's a view across from the boat launch to Indian Island. This is what it looked like in the 19th century. And this. And Indian Island, uh, Alinape Menahan, the people's island. And that was the other permanent settlement of the 19th century, and it still is to this day. So here's the Milford Dam and Powerhouse. And this is where the name Penobscot originally came from, Panawapskek Menahan, place of the white rocks, because in the old days, before the river, before the dam was built, there were there was an island kind of thing in here of white rocks, and that was uh, what the name comes from. And then when the dam was built, they used that to pin the dam on. To they needed it for structure for the dam, so it's it's gone. <clears throat> this is on a portage carrying an empty canoe around the Milford Dam and, and the old mill right there, which is now a nice building with offices and things. Um, so that's one way to portage. And then we got lucky in 2013, we were struggling with our canoe and this man, Terry Day, pulls up and says, well, let's just put that in my pickup truck. Oh, okay, that was a really nice portage. So here's an air photo just to kind of look at all that. Here's, this is Indian Island. Here's the bridge from Indian Island to Old Town. Here's the Milford Dam. And just out of the picture below is going to be French Island where our next campsite is. That's French Island. Here's the, here's the Milford Dam again. This is route two going from Old Town over to um, Milford, and it uses India, French Island as a stepping stone. And our campsite is right down here on the southwest tip. But to get there, you have to go through Shad Rips. I forgot to say, on this side, it's French Island Rips, which can be dry. And on this side, it's Shad Rips, which is this. And you have to get through that, which isn't a bad problem to get to the campsite. So the owner, Jim Mitchell, also has one glamping site if you would like beds. The rest of everything else is for tenting. 
And um, the name for South for French Island is place for translates as place for tanning hides. And there's that's the owner, Jim Mitchell, building up the fire. He has a big fireplace and a huge boulder there. Most of our campsites do not have fires. We don't allow them, but the occasional landowner, private landowner will say, oh no, we should have one here. And he's building his outhouse there. And it turned out to be another beautiful one. And this is what the view looks like down river. This is the dry, to the right, you see the dry Southwest French, I mean, the dry French Island rips. And then downstream, just out of sight is the Great Works. It's now Great Works Rapids. It used to be the Great Works Dam in Old Town. So we're leaving French Island. That's Marsh Island across from us there. And Marsh Island is a big five miles long island, half in Old Town and half in Orono. And it means slippery ledge island because if you were pulling up the river there through those rapids, Great Works Rapids, or if you're paddling down, but mostly if you're pulling up, the rocks are so slippery, it's hard to get a purchase with your pole. So it's Slippery Ledge Island. That's Great Works Rapids where the dam used to be. That's the uh, old mill there, which is now running again, but not dammed. And uh, that's quite challenging with a, with a loaded canoe. I was scared, but we got through it. And this was in 2012 when the Great Works Dam was removed. This was at the beginning when the Wabanaki, the Penobscot tribe invited anyone who wanted to from the general public to come up to the celebration as we watched them first attack that dam and start hammering it out with those jackhammers. And this is at the bottom of Marsh Island where the Stillwater River comes in and creates Basin Mills Rapids, which translates as falls where the river forms channels. And um, it's at the mouth of the Stillwater and very challenging. That's me in a kayak and that's me perched on a rock unintentionally. <laughs> and that's um, everybody recouping after Basin Mills rips. So some more beautiful things you see, these were in August, swamp milkweed and Joe pieweed, beautiful decorations. So this was a trip this year in the fall, in the summer, we took uh, some people down from the Orono boat launch to just on a day trip to Brewer. We did um, the last of the whitewater section, VZ Falls, VZ Rapids, which you'll see, but. This is where we put in at the Orono boat launch. And we stopped at the Orono Country Club campsite, the Penobscot Valley Country Club campsite, to just to visit the campsite there. It wasn't quite lunchtime yet, um, but we wanted everyone to be able to see it. And this is that campsite. And there's that's the latrine, the uh, privy at that campsite with Bucky Owen modeling and Clayton Cole putting up the sign there so you could find it from the river. And that's us taking the picnic table there across, it's a 12 foot picnic table across two canoes. That was a lot of fun. And that's what our kiosks look like, the metal box that inside has a guest book and information and so on. This is the beach there, the Cobble Beach at the Orono campsite. It's a gorgeous beach, lots of wildflowers blooming there. And uh, this is uh, just above the VZ Dam or where the VZ Dam used to be, but in 2013, it was still there, but they had breached it that summer. And just in the time, in the month or so since it had been breached, the water level had gone down all that way. You see all bearing all that much of the banks and it looked very different. And uh, that, is, that is the breach in the dam there. 
And we were able to drag and carry right through that. So it wasn't a long portage at all. It was just get through that hole, get back in on the other side. That used to be there. That's the powerhouse that is gone. And VZ Rapids translates that their name translates as White Waterfall Cascade. It too had been obscured by the dam being built across it. There's the dam as well, up until it was gone. And that's halfway gone, or that's with that breach in it. And then that's what it looks like now. There's the Whitewater Cascade. And then this is approaching the Bangor Salmon Pool, which is just north of Bangor. Um, that's um, Eastern Main Medical on your right, on the right side of the river. And this is the old Bangor Waterworks and a close up of, we were paddling over the dam there, um, over the old Bangor Dam into the Bangor Salmon Pool. And this is the next campsite right there at this Bangor Salmon Pool in, on the Brewer side of the river, the east side. And we were setting the pitching poles over the campsite so, you, so tarps can be pitched over them if, if it's raining. And that place in Brewer is, it translates as dwellings among cedar. This is a board meeting, a Penobscot River Paddling Trail board meeting. Um, at that campsite at the Penobscot Salmon Club before the pandemic, when we could all buddy up together on a 12 foot picnic table. That's the kiosk at that campsite. Then just a short distance down, you come to the Kenduskag River coming in in Bangor, which is also a nice side trip. And that translate has two different translations. I could find stream with water parsnips and place of eel weirs. Passing the Bangor waterfront where you can get out and eat in a restaurant if you want to, sleep in a hotel if you want to. And that we one year we passed the Bangor waterfront during the folk festival. That's all set up over there on the waterfront. Now the last part of the river, this is the tidal part from just above Bangor down to Bucksport. So, and here we have the Kenduskag in Bangor and the Sawadabs Cook in Hamden, Marsh Stream in Frankfort. And um, that is Bucksport right there, place where one crosses and Verona Island here. So this is in Hamden, very steep, steep, high banks. That's where we were so first impressed with how wild and beautiful the Penobscot River was because these steep banks, nobody could have camps or homes or anything on them. And there were eagles in the trees and that was the beginning. Glacial striations on the banks. Uh, and this is in Orrington, uh, we had have a friend Al Baker, who lives in Orrington, and he let us camp in his yard. We, we now think we have a place for a campsite in Orrington with the town of Orrington on their town property where they're going to be building a new boat launch. That's the town manager, and that's the site. And we're excited that that will probably be our next one we work on in Orrington. And out from there, you have a view of Mount Waldo in Frankfort and a little bit further down the river. And uh, its name translates as where there is a big bouldery mountain. And any of you that have been on top of it, you know it is bouldery on top. So we're in the tidal part of the river and this is Spartina grass, which is salt tolerant, a tidal grass. And it's, it blooms in August and those are the flowers. Approaching Bucksport, you can see the uprights of the Penobscot Narrows Bridge. And on the way, on the right bank, um, on the west side, Fort Knox. And they conveniently have steps coming out of the water up to Fort Knox. 
So we invaded the fort. There's the fort. And it, it was named too in, Wabana, in Penobscot language. And then uh, the Penobscot Narrows Bridge. And this is a picture I took from the, from the observation tower on, on top of the bridge. Bucksport is right, the, uh, that's the old Bucksport Mill. And that's the, one of the narrowest places, uh, the fort, yeah, that's the narrowest place to cross. So that is the place where one crosses, not where the Penobscot Narrows Bridge is now. So there are saltwater campsites that we're hooking into. We've explored south and west to Belfast and um, east and south to Castine. And uh, any saltwater campsites we locate, Maine Island Trail said they would adopt them and take the responsibility for taking care of them. So um, on, on the trip around to Belfast, that's approaching Sandy Point Beach and then switching to a kayak. That's um, Fort Point, the stepping ashore place. And Moose Point State Park in Searsport. And that, that trip ended in Belfast. Then the next time we went around the eastern side of Verona Island and camped on Porcupine Island, which is owned by the town of Verona, and made it all the way down to, oh, there's our campsite on Porcupine Island. And then we made it the next day on a falling tide all the way down to Castine to a, an already established main island trail, island, Ram Island. And it's out to sea, it's beautiful out there. So today we have seven completed campsites, two commercial campsites we use, and we are hoping for six future campsites and then everything should be linked up just fine from the East Branch and West Branch down to the main island trail because the hundred miles of the main stem of the Penobscot River will be covered. The end with a plea to contact us. We need help with campsites, board members, event planning, photography. There's our website. And huge thanks to the Penobscot Nation for 10,000 years of protecting the river. Mm. And to Mother Nature, thank you. That's it. Questions? Thank you, Chloe. That was a really beautiful um, presentation. Um, there are no questions in the chat, believe it or not. So I would... Um, at this point, if somebody has a question, please type it in the chat at, or if you felt like it, go ahead and unmute yourself and ask a question. I did tap, put a question in the chat. Is there any more plans to take down more of the dams? Uh, I don't know. The Penobscot River Restoration Trust is um, dedicated to taking care of the ones that they've already worked on, you know, maintaining what's been done for, for, I forget how many more years, like 10 more years or something, the trust goes on. But I don't think there's any plans for taking down more. But um, something I forgot to say was the Milford Dam they did add an electric fish lift, an elevator, which not only moves the fish over the dam, but counts them and classifies them, you know, which species, how many of each species and so forth. And so that gets the fish over the Milford Dam, which is the farthest down towards the sea. Then yeah. the dam removals of um, VZ and Great Works, let them get all the way up to the Milford Dam, I mean, to yeah, the Milford Dam. Wait, I'm sorry. Um, let me start over. Easy and Great Works are the lowest down dams. So they're totally open now. Then above them is the Milford Dam with the new elevator that gets them over that. And as soon as it can be proved that lots of fish are making it all the way up to the next one, the West Enfield Dam, 
they're going to improve fish passageway there, not by taking it down though, because it's important for electrical generation, but for they will figure out better ways and build better ways to get the fish above that. And the same, I believe, plan would take hold with Mattisian Dam, but that's the farthest north, so I'm not sure. I'm sorry, I don't know about future dam removals on the Penobscot. That was very helpful, thank you. All right, so Chloe, another question came in while you were answering that one. What are the best months of the year to travel the river? For me, um, mid-July through mid-September, because the water's low enough that it's not scary. It's not too pushy. <laughs> um, if you're doing, you know, if you're doing the whitewater parts, because with a loaded up canoe, it's, it's kind of tubby, you know, a little hard to maneuver. But there are plenty of people in kayaks and in canoes who love it when the water's running high. And one thing, and that would be um, June, May and June, or uh, the water was running very high in August this year after all that rain we had. But um, one thing you can do is our website will link you up to the stream gauge and you can look on that and there's a way to tell, um, you know, how high the water levels are and, and how challenging it should be. Okay, thanks. Um, Sarah asked a question, have you ever seen a moose on a trip? <laughs> I have not seen a moose on a Penobscot River trip, no. That's what I meant. Yeah. Um, uh, I actually have a question, Chloe. You said that you took people on a day trip from Orono down to, mm -hmm. I don't know where you went to, wherever mm -hmm. you went. But like, uh, are there any people leading or guiding a trip for people that might want to go on? Um, and a couple yeah. nights or something? Yes, there are guides whose um, services we have. We're In fact, we're collecting. The, on our website, there's a, a button for services. And it has guides and outfitters and um, stores, you know, things like that. And so you can look on there. It's just in its rudimentary beginnings. We don't have too many listings yet. We'd love to get more from people who want to guide. And, um, you know, what I would suggest is for a day trip, that way you don't have to portage any dams if you start below one dam and you finish before you get to the next one. That's, uh -huh. that makes it nice. You have to have two cars, you know, a car at the beginning, a car at the end, or a bicycle that you can ride back up to your car or whatever. You have to make arrangements. Um, unless you're in the Old Town area, you can circle around Orson Island. You remember that big island that was kind of in, in part of where the Penobscot splits and goes around Orson Island and Indian Island and Marsh Island? Well, the Orson Island, Indian Island can make a very nice day circle trip you couldn't do it all the way around big old Marsh Island because it has three dams. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, anybody else have a question? Feel free to unmute your mic and ask away. I have a question. Um, where, there, well, where there's the elevator, if the fish are going downstream, do they need to take the elevator or or is there a way they can go down the stream without? Oh, huh. I don't know. <laughs> I need to ask that. You know, I get this, the report, the fish report of how many fish were counted all summer long as they go up the river, but I don't get any reports about fish coming back down. So I would have to ask. Sorry. I have another question. Is the name Piscataquis River Piscataquis? Is that a more common name? Isn't that the name of the river between Maine and New Hampshire? And also, I feel like there's one in in the Monadnock area. Um, I don't know about Monadnock, but the one that's between the border between Maine and New Hampshire is Piscataqua. <laughs> slightly <laughs> different, 
and it, you know, Piscataquis, it comes from the word for little branch river. Maybe the Piscataqua is a little branch river too. You know, maybe it came from a similar name. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, that, that's interesting. I didn't know that either. Um, anybody else have a question? Great job, Chloe. <laughs> Thank you. Yay. Well, get on our website and give us a, send us an email or call me up. My phone number is 338-1147. And um, we'll get you a job. <laughs> Chloe, this was awesome. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you so much, Chloe and Belfast Bay Watershed Coalition for this great program. I'm going to stop recording now.